This video will demonstrate how to uh, complete, read and interpret data that's been presented in a two-way table. Data that's represented in a two-way table is often uh, data that's gathered from a survey and it's usually categorical data. So, for example, the answers to the question, what colour is your hair, what's your favourite colour, how, what sort of pet do you have, that sort of thing. Very short surveys, as you can see in this couple of examples that I've got here. Um, this two-way table is asking uh, the people who took part in the survey, are you a boy or a girl, and what colour is your hair? This one here, are you male or female, what sort of car, I think, is that you prefer, and this one here, are you male or female, and uh, what's your favourite sport to watch on television? Let's look, have a little closer look at this particular two-way table. It has the results of the survey already entered in the two-way table. The reason it's called a two-way table is because you're looking at the data two ways. You're looking at it from the point of view of um, gender and also hair colour. And if you read horizontally along the rows, you're looking at hair colour. And if you look vertically along the columns, you're looking at um, gender. Now, the first thing that we need to do uh, when we're doing a two-way table is if you haven't already got the totals of the rows and the columns completed, you need to do that first. So I've added an extra column and an extra row, and I've just added up all of these numbers to find that there were 20 boys and 20 girls surveyed, and also there were 9 people with black hair, 10 blondes, 18 brown-haired people, and 3 redheads. And um, just to check that I've, ca I've got everyone ca accounted for, if I add all these numbers up together, I get 40. And if I add horizontally, I also get 40. Now, what you should not do is um, add the 40, 20 and the 20 and the 3 and the 18 and the 10 and the 90 to make 80. That doesn't make sense. This 40 is the sum of all of these numbers vertically and the sum of these two numbers horizontally. And they should both add up to the same thing. The questions that you're often answered um, about data in a two-way table. Now, you could, I suppose, in the lower grades, be asked how many blonde-haired girls were there in the survey, and you can straight away answer there that's six blonde-haired girls. But that's not what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're going to be answering questions in the form of a probability. So a probability, as you know, is um, the answer will be a fraction. It'll be uh, an answer between 0 and 1. It's either a fraction or a decimal or a percentage form. So let's have a little look at the kinds of questions that we could be asked. What is the probability that a blonde boy is chosen? Now, the only thing that's difficult about these questions is determining whether or not we're talking about the whole population of people surveyed when answering the question or whether we're just talking about a subset. In this first question, it doesn't specify, so it's assumed that it is the whole population. So we're just looking for how many blonde boys are there that were surveyed. And up here, there's four. Four blonde boys out of how many people were surveyed? There were 40. So our answer for this one is going to be 4 out of 40 written as a fraction, and then simplified, I suppose, uh, or um, changed it into a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. If you left it as a fraction, you really should have left it as 1 over 10 in a simplified form. 1 over 10 or 0.1 are both appropriate answers for this question. Now let's look at this second one. This is what I mean by knowing uh, who it is that you're interested in. In this particular question, we're only interested in the girls out of the girls. What is the probability that a redhead person is chosen? Well, there's only one redheaded girl. Here she is here. And there are 20 girls altogether. So the answer to this question is 1 out of 20. Now, the temptation would be to say it's 1 out of 40 because that's the total number of people surveyed. But the question clearly says that we're only interested in the girls this time. This is really the only place that you can go wrong with uh, answering questions from two-way tables. So, 1 out of 20 is our answer. Simplified or made into a decimal is 0 0.05. Let's look at this final question. Out of the black-haired people, 
a boy is chosen out of the blackhead people. Now, in the previous question, we were only looking at this column because this column represented the girls. But in this last question, we're only looking at this row because we're only interested in these nine black-haired people. It's almost like we've got the 40 people in our room and for this question we're saying, okay, black-haired people, over here, over here in the corner, I just want to talk to you. And then we say, how many of them are boys? There's four. So the answer to this final question is four out of nine. Not four out of 40. If the question was... If the question was, what's the probability that you'll choose a black-haired boy, then that would be 4 out of 40. But the question is not that. It says, out of the black-haired people, how, what's the probability that you'll choose a boy? So as I said, that's about the only thing that you can really uh, make a mistake with with two-way tables. Being really careful. My questions always have out of, but there are other ways of representing it as well. Let's look at this question. Here is an incomplete two-way table. I would like you to pause the video, write out the table again, and see if you can complete these missing numbers. It's not a great, it's not a huge task, but um, have a go at it anyway, and then see if you can answer this question about probability here. Pause the video and have a go. So, how did you go? It's just a case of um, adding and subtracting to fill in the gaps. I started here, I said, um, of the people in the stalls, I should have talked about what this question was about, it's uh, members of an audience at a play, and the stalls in a theatre are called uh, the flat area closest to the stage, and then the circle is usually the area behind that, or up one balcony, and the balcony obviously is higher again. So the stalls had uh, 77 people in them, so 77 will go here. 39 plus 21 is 60, etc. until you complete the table. And I have it completed on this next page. So compare your answer to mine. Now, when we answer this question, what is the probability that a randomly chosen audience member so that tells us we're looking at the whole 205 people in the audience. We're not just looking at people in the stalls or just the children or just the people in the balcony. We're looking at the whole audience. How many of them are adults seated in the balcony? So that's our 47 here. So 47 over 205. That could possibly be simplified, but I've not checked that. How did you go? Let's look at another question. Here is a two-way table that is a result of a survey of men and women and their preferred uh, viewing on TV of different things. 50 people were surveyed here. Uh, I would like you to pause the video. You don't need to rewrite the table this time. Pause the video and see if you can answer these one, two, three, four questions. See how you go. So, how did you go? Let's have a look. A person, let's go to the next page. A person chosen at random. A person. Straight away that tells us we're looking at the whole 50 people. A person chosen at random is a woman who likes to watch sports. So that's those six ladies there. Six people out of 50. Six out of 50. If you're leaving it as a fraction, you need to simplify it. Three out of 25. Or dividing three and 25 to get 0.12. The second question says, out of the men, a person who, what is the probability that the person likes to watch movies? So this time we're only looking at this row here, this row here that has the 20 men in it. How many like movies? There's eight of them. So the probability is going to be eight out of 20, simplified to two out of five, and that's 0.4 as a decimal. Out of the sports fans, a woman is chosen. So this time we're only looking at this column here. So we're, the total is 16. 6 out of 16 are women. Simplified is 3 out of 8. Has a decimal point three seven five. This one here, which is more likely? A man who likes to watch dancing or a dance fan who is a male? Now these both refer to these two guys here. These two guys here are men who like to watch dance. So if we're looking at it from the point of view of men, if we say to the group of 50 people, hey, blokes, 
come on over here into the corner. There's going to be 20 of them. Hands up who likes dance. And you're going to get two gentlemen put their hands up. Two out of 20. Simplified, point one or one out of 10. But if instead, when the 50 people are in the room, you say, hey, dance fans, come on over here. You'd have 18 people come towards you two of whom would be men, so the probability that the dance fans are male is 2 out of 18. Still the same two, but it depends on which group of people you are grouping them in. This, this group are dance fans, and this group are, are men. So 2 out of 20 compared to 2 out of 18. 2 out of 18 is slightly more likely. How did you go? Okay. Make sure you watch my videos again or rewind this and have a look at it again and then go and find some practice for yourself. Thanks a lot.